Welcome back everyone, I'm Danny the Dinosaur Drawer and today I'm going to be showing you all how to draw the Avenger War Machine. So yeah, I got my mechanical pencil here, it's called a Graph Gear 500 mechanical pencil. I've got an eraser and that's what we're going to use to start off this drawing. And here is our reference image. So yeah, this is a cool reference image and I'm probably going to put a helmet on him because I'm not really that good at drawing faces. And I think it'll look cooler that way. So yeah, let's dive in. I think I'm probably going to do this in pen as well to make it um, yeah, look cooler. But we're going to start off with pencil, which is much safer. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's get started. Put a circle there for where his head is going to be, or the helmet. It's got really, really big suit compared, like his suit is very much more bulkier than than Iron Man's suit is because he's got a lot of accessories. So this poster is from Avengers Endgame. Just so you know, so I think it's War Machine's most most recent suit. So he's got one arm down, he's sort of like looking looking out. So it's, yeah, his helmet's going to be looking up that way. And he's got a machine gun coming out of his back. So we're going to have that pointing there. And unfortunately, the reference image cuts this part off. So we're sort of going to have to use other reference images that I will, that I will get. And let's put in the other shoulder, which is, again, a little bit behind him. We've got part of his arm, but again, it fades. So we're not going to be drawing his hands or much of his much of his legs here. So the drawing is sort of going to end right about there. If that's okay with you guys. It's not a full body drawing. Just a war machine pose. And you could even put a, like a cross line here. to Just so you know how far you're drawing to. Which is a good idea. So I'm just going to have that right there. And yeah, I think that's a good enough outline. Our proportions seem seem right. So I think we can dive in with the refinement stage. So the first thing I think we're going to put in a lot of detail into will be his um, machine gun. Pops out of his the back of his suit and attaches to this really cool machine gun which seems to have unending rounds. It's got, never runs out of bullets. So yeah, we got part of the extendable arm showing there. And then, let's see. I got two reference images, and I think I'm gonna be using, this might be like an older version of his gun, but I can actually see the full thing, which helps a lot. So yeah, it's got like a oct octagonal <laughs> shape to it. To this back part of the gun. We're not going to be able to see the very back of it because his helmet's going to be blocking it. Then we got, it's got like three different sides to it. Let's put one side, the barrel, that's what I'm talking about. The barrel of his machine gun has three different sides. So that's sort of like a triangular shape at the very end of the barrel. And there we see it, it gets a little smaller. And that is a rough version of what his gun looks like. So again, there's a lot more detail. It's got a little, bunch of little details and there's light coming out from it. But that is good enough for now. We'll put more detail in when we start shading. And right now, I think it's a good idea to put in the helmet next. Get out. Lines coming down here. And I'm going to stop right there in his forehead. And then right above, where, like right where the eyebrows would be, we have a line there. A little bit farther down from the other one, but they're parallel. And this goes up. It's going to have two lines that go up like that. And then we're going to have them 
two more lines that go down. And then here's where we're going to have is the eyes, or the eye slits. This looks very much like a like a medieval helmet. I think we're going to have those a little closer together. Then we're going to have part of the side showing. The sides get a little flatter. Then it's got part of the suit that comes out. Maybe that's to protect the ear. But yeah, he's got so many surfaces, it's very complex. I hope I do a good enough job that Don Cheadle likes it. Because <laughs> he did make a comment about if you're going to draw a war machine, do a good job and use different shades of gray and everything. <laughs> so yeah, then in the chic here, part of it's opened up. It's got sort of a frown on its face. It's got high chic bones. Yeah, it's definitely a scary looking suit. And I think I'm getting a little bit more practice at drawing the Iron Man suit. Or like War Machine suit too. Because it's pretty similar to the Iron Man one. And yeah, I've been drawing <coughs> a lot more Marvel stuff since since Endgame came out. But guys, I'm not going to spoil it for you. So you guys are fine. But I would encourage you not to write any spoilers yourself if you've if you've seen the movie don't write any spoilers in the comments please because so I actually I only saw like two of the trailers so I was really surprised when I saw the movie I was completely taken by surprise so yeah there we have a good sense of what War Machine's helmet looks like now I can go back to our original reference image, which also has part of the helmet on. It's got part of the helmet showing, but not much of it. So now we've got to put in the neck. The neck is going to be mostly shaded. We're not going to be able to see it very well. And then it's got. It's got these straps that come from the very back of the suit to the front. Then I think right about here, I'm going to put a line down the center, which is a good idea to do because it's like the center line, you know. So you can make both sides look the same. That's one of the hardest things about drawing like Iron Man, is that he's very, but like both sides of the suit have to be almost exactly the same. That's very hard to do. There's no wrinkles or anything. It's much different than drawing someone with, with clothing. I think that makes it more difficult. See, it's got this little piece of light, which basically, I think, is the energy source or something. I'm not, I don't know much about Iron Man's or War Machine's suit, so. But it seems like when he gets hit there by vision in Civil War, that seemed to completely kill his suit, and he fell down and got very injured. He should have had a parachute, I don't know why he didn't. Because, like, Spider-Man had one in his suit, and Iron Man made sure to do, put one in. But poor Rhodey didn't get a parachute. So again, there's a bunch more detail following his suit down the middle there. Got okay, more plates. <clears throat> so it sort of looks like a human body, but it's very different in many ways. So we have one line coming up from the corners here. 
then he's got another weird shape. I'm really struggling to tell you guys how to draw <laughs> these different shapes. Like this one, what is this? It's just like a piece of metal, like a shinier metal that's put on there at the tip of this metal strap that comes forward. Then I'm going to draw it on the other side. And then there's another line there. I'm going to leave out a little bit of detail, but I'm going to try and be as accurate as possible. I'm working on uh, um, a goal, and my goal is to draw every Avenger in from Endgame. It's probably not going to happen soon, just because there's so many of them. It's like drawing the first six Avengers would be like a, a a better goal because there's only six of them, and that's much more attainable. But doing like an individual poster for each one is going to be hard. But it also might be cool to do like a poster of just Captain America with like all the Captain Americas from each, like a different um, picture of Captain America from each movie and you combine them all into the one poster. I think that's a good idea. So yeah, if you guys think I should do a, a speed drawing on that, please let me know. Like a poster of Captain America or whichever Avenger I you guys choose, whether it's Thor or or Black Widow or yeah, just or Iron Man. Cause I'm open to comments. So again, wrote um, War Machine suit. It's got sort of like some abs here. It's got some metal that can that can basically crunch, I guess, it can like help him bend forward and. That part is a little bit complicated. He's got a bunch of strips of metal in this area. But yeah, I think we're pretty much done with the torso. Of course, things will change a bit once we start putting them um, using our pen. It's going to make it look a lot different. And then now we have to work on his shoulder pad. So his shoulder pad is actually a lot more, it's going to be a lot of work because it's got a little insignia there of like a star and several stars next to it. It's got huge shoulder pads, I guess is what you'd call them. These are like the dream shoulder pads of any football player. <laughs> so again, he's got more metal pieces that, that are, make it so he can actually move. Because when you think about it, you have to yeah, have a bunch of pieces of armor, but they have to all be movable. It's got a rim, of course. And yeah, let's put in that star. So put in the star. I'm terrible at drawing stars, especially when they're on a rounded surface. And then it's got two stripes going in. So I guess it's like an America symbol there. When you, when you think about it, most of the most of the Avengers are American. So we've got two stars there and there's also like a darker blue color on the bottom the bottom part of the that shoulder pad. But yeah, we're done with that. Let's move on to the upper arm. He's got a, a large bicep. The cool thing about these suits is they'll make anyone look good. Or almost anyone. I guess if you're, you're really fat, you wouldn't be able to get into it. But if you're not muscular, it would be totally fine. Because the suit automatically makes anyone look really cool. So yeah, we basically got a bunch of metal there. Then we got an elbow joint that we're gonna partially see from this angle. And we got the forearm, which is pretty complicated, much more complicated than the upper arm. 
It's got different vents across the top of the forearm. Then a little extra vent, it looks like. I mean, think how much this would cost to make and everything. I love War Machine's suit a lot because it has certain accessories that Iron Man's suit does not have. It's like he really helps in the fight at the airport in Captain America's Civil War. So yeah guys, I, I said I wouldn't spoil anything from Endgame, but I am going to say a few things about other uh, movies that War Machine is in. Because you guys should have seen those by now. Unless you're like a younger, younger person watching my videos. So let's go to the other shoulder pad. And he's going to have those metal links. And we're going to see the top of his shoulder. And from this, from this lighting, it's really bright and reflective. So I can't tell what sort of pattern is on there. But I can quickly check with another, another reference image. So I guess it'll be the same star pattern. But I'm just going to leave it like really shiny right now. Because that's how it looks like in this lighting. So yeah, his bicep is gonna you're barely gonna be able to see any of it because he's got his arm pulled back. But we are gonna see some of his forearm, which is very thick. Because it's got to be able to have tank missiles in there, you know? <laughs> arm tank missile can suddenly pop out any minute out of his forearm which is a pretty cool accessory so yeah there we have it guys i think we're pretty much done with the penciling stage it's already looking very cool and yeah i can't wait to start with the pen stage which will we'll be putting more shading in and a lot more detail yeah so guys i'm going to be using like a 0 0.2 0 0.8 0 0.5 these are felt tip pens um, they're pigment liner, water-based, and water-resistant. Uh, so you can probably get these on Amazon. That's where I ordered mine. And then I'm also going to be using a Sharpie, like a fine point permanent marker here for some of the shading, um, shading parts. And you have to be using like a thick piece of paper, and that's what I've been using. So if you don't have a thick piece of paper, then yeah, you should just leave it as a pencil drawing, I guess, and just clean it up with the eraser. But if you're working on hard stock paper like I am, then it's fine to um, use a pen. And even a Sharpie like this will not bleed through it. And it's great for the shading areas. And this is actually like what real comic book artists use when they're doing their drawings. So yeah, let's dive right in and start using our pens. So again, I think we're gonna follow the same pattern we did at the beginning of this video. With, we'll start with the gun and then move on to the, to the mask there. So yeah, it's got three sides, and each side is a little bit tricky to draw. We're going to have three sides, and they all come here, and at the very tip of the barrel here. So I think each one looks pretty much the same length. I want the opening to look look good so we're gonna have one line coming back another one I really should be using a ruler for the mechanical stuff here not very good at drawing straight lines let's do another another two parallel lines and here we can do this little like ladder sequence that he has like a bunch of little squares and each one is lit up so when we color it it's going to look very cool and he's got two two more little pieces of metal connecting there and then we're going to finish off 
back end of this section, which is also connected. It's got a bigger piece on the back. Guys, I'm just having a tough time explaining what each of these sections are. All I can say, all I can say is it looks very metal, very metallic. And this part of the barrel fits inside another part of the barrel, if that makes sense. Or, yeah, it fits into the back of the gun. This is a very funny looking machine gun, if you ask me. And again, I'm trying trying to do my best to draw straight lines here. So we got to attach the bottom of the gun here to the extendable arm, like so. It comes out of, yeah, as I already said, it comes out of the back of the suit. And then we forgot a little the the inner barrel, I guess. So I guess what this is, now I'm thinking about it, is probably a silencer. Something to make his gun a little less noisy. So the actual barrel is going to be right about here. And that is... All the sides are connected, unlike the, the three different sections there that are on top of it. So you've got the back section of the gun here, <clears throat> which has probably got all the ammunition in it. And I bet it's so high tech that when he when it goes back into his suit, it reloads <laughs> or something like that. See, so yeah, got he's got a very very cool looking gun on the back there. <clears throat> We're gonna have to ink set a little bit before we do some more shading with like. The sharpie. So the sharpie is probably going to be our last step before coloring. So now let's just work on the mask. Now okay, these two lines going up. It's going to be a little bit more simple now. The reason that we've already put in put down the pencil lines, but we also must be careful not to make any mistakes. Adding the eyelids there. So War Machine, like Iron Man has blue light coming out of his coming out of his eyes, but War Machine is like red light. Then War Machine's got two more lines coming up here to the top of the helmet. I wonder if he like asked um, Tony Stark for certain accessories to be put into his machine. Because I guess everybody's suit would be different if they could choose what was put into their suit. Like the different little things. Like you say, I want a flamethrower in mine. Or I want like a like Iron Man had, when he fought Thanos, had tons of little things, like different shields and yeah, and Infinity War I'm talking about, and I'll talk about Endgame, just for those of you who are wondering. Infinity War he put up a great fight. He even had like a little dagger at the very end, or like a spike that came out of his arm. Which he attempted to stab Thanos, Thanos with. Thanos with. <laughs> so we have two more lines coming up here. Little sections that go up to his eyes. And he's got another vent-like section over his ear. We'll put that in. Then again, he's got a hollow part of his cheekbone. And then this section will connect to the jaw. Yeah, the the mask always makes whoever is inside look very mean. Well, not mean, but very serious or 
because of the downturned mouth, I'd say. That's what makes it look like that. I'm going to make that line a little thicker. And then now we can put in the shin. I'm going to switch back to my other reference image so we can get a better look at what the shin looks like from here. So it looks pretty good. I might have messed up a little bit on the mouth area. But for the most part, I'm happy with the results. So yeah, there we have War Machine's helmet completed. And then again, as I said, his neck, I'm sure it's complicated, but from in this reference image, you can't see much because there's a lot of shadow being cast over. So this whole section here is very shaded. And now we can continue on to, yeah, the, the shoulder straps that go over his shoulder. And these two lines on either side that go to the the center light. The power source, I don't know what you call it. So if you do know what that's called, this little light in the center of his chest that's similar to Iron Man's, uh, please comment below. I will definitely check out, I'll read up a little bit more on War Machine after I finish this video. I should have probably done that before, learned all the names of the different sections, but yeah, it's, it's complicated. The cool thing about really advanced tech is that you can speak to it, so that's, that's pretty neat. So we got the opposite metal piece on the other side there. Got that put in. Then let's put in this little power light there. Like so. And yeah, this is going to be very bright when we color it in. So leave it like not too dark because there's a bunch of little sections in there but yeah we want to have that lit up then again we're going to have this section coming down the center like so and he has his first abdominal plate that's what I'm going to be calling it right now so it's right about where his abs would be So let's put in, yeah, some lines that go around to his back. And then he's got some more vents. He's got a lot of, like, openings, it looks like. So that's probably one of the places where Ant-Man would try and get in if he was trying to take his suit apart. Then, yeah, let's put another vent in, right here. On the other side of his chest. <clears throat> and then here's the ab part, like where all the ab plates are. It's a very, little bit complicated. So I'm going to take it slowly. So yeah, the lighting is not that good as I mentioned before, and that's why it's going to look a little bit, a little bit off from other reference images. I even compare this to the actual um, 
War Machine suit, it might look a little bit different. But for the most part, it's pretty accurate. So here he's got sort of like a bend, a little bend in his, in his torso. So we're going to have the bend be right about there. And yeah, I think that's pretty much good for the abs section. Just the all these curve, these lines that go up and down were confusing me a bit, but now I think we got them pretty solid there. And let's see, I'm gonna get a pencil that's a little thicker. I was using 0.2, so that's pretty thin. So yeah, for the shoulder, I'm gonna use a 0.5, and then maybe for the star, I'll use a thinner pen. Just first make the rim of the shoulder, shoulder cap. I have these different sections. The cool thing about like Iron Man suit and War Machine suit is that they can go in, they can go into space with them basically. So they're almost like a space suit, which I think is pretty neat. An Iron Man can like get into, get up into space super fast. Probably a lot faster than most rockets. I, I I bet you guys wonder this as well, but like, wouldn't it be cool if somebody eventually was able to create such a suit? It seems very futuristic, but I bet someone possibly could in the future. Because now that like SpaceX is getting rockets that can land back on their original launch pad. We've come a long way since like Apollo 11 and those first rockets. So maybe you could get a rocket th that could be around the size of a man. But yeah, probably we're not going to see that anytime soon. <laughs> so again, let's put in some more detail into his forearm. Got a bunch of little, like a little ladder pattern, as I call it, just like a bunch of little steps there. Another curved line here. See, like when I'm drawing dinosaurs, I can actually name <laughs> the different body parts. Like here's the leg, and here's the the arms and stuff. But with the war machine suit, it's like all these different little hard, so hard to, to explain when I'm, when I'm drawing, but yeah, just follow along what you guys see, and it'll turn out fine. So we got some more, looks like vents again, little air openings, and we switch to a point two pencil for our star. So the star is going to have a rim, which means there's there's going to be two lines for the edge of the star, so just be very careful here not to mess up. So guys, I've thought about like starting an online an online store where I would sell originals and prints of my artwork. So I'm really interested in your comments. Um, if you've watched this far into the video, please comment below if you think that would be a good idea to do in the future. And yeah, comment below if you'd ever buy anything too, just like, and what you would buy if you, if you did buy something. If you did buy a print, would you like a, like a colored one, or an original, or just a, a print that's signed? I'm just interested for you guys' feedback. I know I really appreciate the comments that say like good job and you're the greatest artist in the world and stuff like that. But I, I appreciate more of the comments that are actually people giving me advice and telling me like what stuff you guys like especially. So
that being said, please comment below if you think I should take that step forward and start an online, um, yeah, like a website that I could sell stuff on. I could sell my art prints. Because I think it would be so cool to do art as a living, but I'm really not sure about it right now. Right now I'm planning to go into graphic design. But I think comic comic book writing would be fun to do. I know like sequential art seems very tedious, but I personally like it a lot. I used to do it a lot when I was younger. I've been trying to get a little bit back into it. Because that would be a, like a dream come true of mine to actually be able to illustrate like a Marvel book or a DC comic book. And also another thing I'm, I've been thinking about is to write and publish my own like dinosaur children's book. So yeah, we're pretty much done with the small details um, of the pen stage and next we just have to um, do the shading with the sharpie. And before you erase all the pencil marks, be sure to let the ink set for a bit. So guys, I as you can see, <clears throat> so I already erased with my nice trusty eraser. And yeah, luckily I didn't smudge anything and I might have darkened a few of the lines while uh, the camera was off. But yeah, I'm back with the Sharpie pen and now we can start putting in some serious shading. So I picked out a few random pencils. Again, as I told you guys in my Iron Man vs. Captain America tutorial, I don't have a proper pencil set yet, but um, yeah, I got a bunch of random pencil sets that I mix up in a box. And so here we got, this is actually from Arteza. So this is a nice red color. This is called Carmen Red. I got a black pencil, which is going to do most of the work. A few silvers and grays, and then a white pencil. And yeah, the red is going to be just for like certain spots in the gun, all the parts where the light is shining. And I think I'm gonna do, yeah, use the red pencil first. So yeah, let's begin. We're gonna have red shining from these little holes. Again, if you don't have a good pencil set, that's fine. Cause I don't even have one right I don't have one currently, so be sure just to like, yeah, eyeball it. Choose whatever colors you think look best. Like, choose your favorite red pencil for the, yeah, for the red parts and, but you definitely need a, a black pencil. That, that's probably the most important one. You can almost draw a roadie completely with just the black pencil, like his suit is just, shades of gray if you can manage if you know how to use a black pencil properly you can draw all the shades of gray and then you just leave the white spots blank and that's pretty simple so you've got his eyes there colored in now let's move on to his energy piece here actually he's got a little bit of light shining out of this little area there and right here on his forearm he's got another light shining as he does over here. And then his center piece here, the very center of his chest is gonna be also red. But I might actually, you guys should probably get out like a yellow pencil of some sort, because that'll really make it look bright. If you just put a tiny bit of yellow at the edges there. Trying to make it look like it's really bright inside. And for that, usually you have to leave it white there with a little bit of yellowish color. So, yeah, I think it looks pretty bright. So, I'm happy with how it looks. And I'm just checking several reference images 
for any other spot that might have some light. Looks like his joints might send out a little bit of light, but in the reference image, the, the main one I'm looking at does not have any more red than what I've put in. So let's, I think I'm, we should start off with the black pencil. And yeah, so let's, here it is. So the black pencil is gonna do the majority of the work here. So yeah, right here next to the star, we're gonna be coloring it nice and black. Let's see where else do we need to use our black pencil. Right here, except we're gonna do it a little lighter. Don't, don't do a very dark shade. This shade is going to be a little lighter. And part of it's going to be darker because it's shaded under the rim there of the shoulder cap. Then be sure that leaving light, white spots is key because to make it look really metallic you have to have reflection, light reflection. See, with the black pencil, you can almost do the same as you could with the using a gray pencil, which is one of the great things. I've actually, like I usually use my black pencils, I like wear them down before any other pencil, and uh, any other colored pencil in my pencil boxes. So I, I've actually ordered them separately before. Like this one here, I ordered it by itself just because I was desperate and needed a black pencil. I wasn't going to buy a whole new colored pencil set just for the black pencil, so ordered, I ordered it separately. It's also a bit thicker, this one I'm using right now, it's uh, Faber-Castell, Faber-Castell, not sure exactly how to pronounce that, but... So, a little bit more shading there. You don't want to make everything too dark, because it'll take away from the detail that we painstakingly put in with the pen. So this arm is looking very good. We probably should have started with the gun because that was becoming tradition. We always started with the gun and moved on to the helmet and down to the rest of the body. But we're starting with the arm now. Then each of these sections is going to be shaded in as well. Make sure it's like darker near the, each, each, each the, near the top of each section. It should be a little darker. Except for this last one, it'll be darker at the bottom. Like so. Then we have to be careful to avoid to avoid the stars in this on the top of the shoulder cap. But we're going to try and shade around them. The lighter color. And it may take practice. For you guys to get used to pressing lighter or soft, dark or harder with your pencil, but it comes it comes with practice. Like the more you do it, the more natural it feels. And learning how to do that is very crucial with colored pencils. And I myself am learning how to do it since I've just started recently doing more and more colored pencil drawings. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see a bunch of the Avengers I've recent, some of the Avenger posters I've recently drawn with colored pencils. And by the way, I'll have the, I have the link to my Instagram account in the description below, in case any of you are interested in checking that out. So yeah, War Machine's gun is also going to be shaded in. The colored pencil leaves a nice, more of a grainy look than the than the pen does, which is nice. Then let's make this area a little dark. The bottom section of this r rim, because it's sort of sunken in. This piece, this part of the metal is sunken in, so that's why it's a little darker. Then the, each of these sections is also going to be 
partially shaded near the top of course because more light will hit the bottom in the top section and this whole area can be a little lighter because of the the lights there are shining and that is key to leave it light around there so it actually looks like a real light and that's also shaded in this section and the top panel of this I guess, I don't know how many sizes it is, but it looks like maybe an octagon. The top, the top side here is going to be the lightest. So it's, I guess, lighter as it gets near the top. Put some more gray in. And even this top rim is, is a gray colored, but we just draw a little lighter. Also, the bottom of this little attachment is going to be shaded like so. So it's looking very good, very metallic. It's the look I wanted, so that's good. I'm trying to think now, we gotta. Start move. Let's move on to the head. And using circular movement, you can make a like a different effect than if you're doing a line movement. Like here, it looks a little rough because you're going back and forth. But sometimes when you move in circles, it looks very smooth <clears throat> and it looks a little bit more like paint. So yeah, but we have to be the most careful with the face because I think that's the most important part. So, part of it's going to be very light. So we have to keep in mind where the reflections are. So I'm trying to use my own my own tips and do circular movement. Sometimes the movement you do will help define the help like show the shape of the object you're drawing. It's like this face is rounded. So you sort of want to have the pencil going in the direction or like if you're drawing an egg, you know, you want to and you're drawing the shadows, you want to do like curved lines. It helps instead of doing just straight lines. Which is a great idea. You guys should try that. Just putting an egg on the table or something like that, then turn on a lamp next to it to cast some nice shadow on it, and then try and drawing that. It's a great exercise to do. But of course, exercises are never as fun as the actually drawing what you want to draw. Because I've, I've heard really like professional artists tell me when I was asking them for tips, and they would say yeah draw more stuff from real life like put a pitcher a salt shaker and an apple on, on a table and sketch that from five different angles or something so that's great for your for you to become a better artist but it's not as fun as <laughs> like drawing avengers or something like that and i think when you're drawing for fun you you draw more often and you draw with more inspiration and stuff so i think both ways are key so my, my tip, which you guys have all heard, is just draw as much as you can. The more you draw, the just the better you, you get at it. And of course, some exercises will help you get better faster. But it's also just fun to, to draw the things you like. So yeah, we got a nice war machine mask and helmet. It's looking very, very cool. And now I think we are ready to move on to the torso. And just an interesting fact, guys, like you might have seen this video, I did a speed drawing of the Avengers Endgame poster. I did like sort of my own version. And War Machine was in the corner, and this is sort of the, <clears throat> the same pose, as you can see on my tablet here. This is from the poster. And War Machine is in pretty much the same pose, but it looks a little different. And yeah, the one in the poster is a lot simpler and easier to draw than this one. But yeah, 
I'm glad I'm drawing War Machine again in that pose. <clears throat> so let's tackle this. I might pull out a silver pencil. Just, just looking at a few spots here that might benefit from being drawn in silver. Like the rim here, you might want to add a little silver to that. And then, like this, this piece right here, on both sides will be drawn with silver. And then I think this little funny section of the strap should also be drawn lightly with silver. And then this, this whole, yeah, this whole next section, I'm also going to put a layer of silver down, but also we'll probably use some more black pencil there. Then I have a I have a gray pencil here, which I might use to also help with certain areas here. So it doesn't look completely black. So right now I'm going sort to of, sort of lighten up as we get closer out on this spot here. Because the ink is very, very dark. So you want to lighten up gradually as you come out from that dark shadow. Then again, yeah, we want to get this dark shadow to gradually get lighter. Let's get near the top of this, of this shape. So this is looking very good, very realistic. Yeah, as I said, this part here is silver, but I'm also going to add some shading to that silver with the black pencil. And each of these little sections, these little rims that pop up out of the suit, we're going to shade under under those. And as Don Cheadle said, he wanted us to use a lot of different colors and stuff, so that's what I'm trying to do is incorporate maybe some more grays and but the to tell you guys the truth I could do it all with the black pencil except for the the red the red section there I could, I could do all of the the drawing with the black pencil and it would look pretty good so this crescent moon shape is going to be completely black on both sides let's add some more gray to this it also depends on the angle you're looking at a drawing from. Some angles, the the silver pencil look very shiny. From other angles, it looks just like a gray pencil. So this plate here is going to be going to be gray. Of course, after like Endgame is out of theaters and stuff. Then that's when you're gonna get more, more pictures, more reference images to use. So this year I hope to continue drawing the Avengers and finish my goal of drawing each of them. I want to do them like in their in their final stages. Like Avengers and, and Endgame probably has their best suits of armor or costumes or whatever you want to call it, them. They probably are wearing like their finest apparel. And this is not a spoiler, but as you guys have seen on the posters, Captain America finally has scales on his suit, which is super cool, because it's just like in the comics. And when I first saw that on the poster, I was like, yes, we finally have Captain America's suit with scales. So I think they did do some special things with the, the costumes this time. So let's start dark here next to the, the power source. And then get lighter as we get near the top. Except here, yeah, we're going to get dark, start dark here. And then we're actually going to get a little lighter as we get nearer to the light. But basically, this side is going to be a little lighter than this side. 
the lighting's kind of weird in this. It's like if you were standing out on a field and the sun was <clears throat> from one angle, it would look much different. But here there's light from tons of different directions because it looks like he's in space in this reference image. So again, this area is going to be very dark. I almost could have done it with the black pen, but that would have, been, would have looked a little harsh. So the black pencil will suffice. My hands get very tired after I'm using colored pencils for some reason. Like when I'm doing shading with, with a regular graphite pencil, it seems a lot smoother. Like I feel like I have to work a lot harder when putting down colored pencils onto paper. So again, I'm going to actually take my eraser and lighten up this area. Like I said, it was, it's got, I guess it's much lighter as it gets closer to that, to the right side. So this eraser I'm using is pretty good. It can erase most mistakes I do with colored pencils, but not all of them. If I drew too dark with the with a pencil or yeah, push down too hard, it's not gonna fix that. But yes, it's pretty. It's a, it's a good eraser. You can find it at Hobby Lobby. It's called like a Moo eraser, spelled M O O. I'm sure it's available online as well. How to draw the Avengers. Is that a question? So yeah, we've got Careful. most of his torso done. We've got a lot of time when you're some nice warming. different shades. You want to get that one right. There's a lot of I hope detail. Don Cheeto would There's like this drawing. There's a lot drawing. of shading. A lot of people miss that. There's subtlety. There's a family of grays. You can't just go gunmetal gray and be done with it. Don't rush through your war machine drawing. A few shades of gray and silver, and the, the black pencils did a lot of good work. And let's see, we've got a little bit of work left to do. We're almost there. I can see the finish line. I can almost tell what this drawing is going to look like when it's finished. We've got this one shoulder plate left. It's very light. I'm going to be using a light cross hatch for the shoulder shoulder pad. And again, on the bottom side of it, it's going to be very dark. Leaving a little bit of white there for the rim, so that can look a little shiny. Then for the top part here, I'm going to use a gray, but leave a little bit of white at the top. Then again, use the black pencil to finish off this last section. So guys, this drawing looks really good. I'm really proud of it. I hope yours looks good too. I just erase a little bit of the mess I made with smudging. It wasn't that bad. The smudging, I mean. And then I'm going to get out a pen, let's see, a 0.5 would be the best one to use for signing. I think I'll sign it right next to his waist there. So, sign it. And put in the date. So yeah guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like. And please comment below what you think I, which event or you think I should draw next. Or what dinosaur you think I should draw next. And yeah, please share this video with your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next video.